Uh, hopefully you can hear me. Um, <laughs> oh my god, guys. The market for a uh, sort of sh a higher at shoppers market that I uh, taking part in right now. Basically, we have all been scammed. Yeah, try to remember. <laughs> Sleeping boy, scratchy. <laughs> it's a mess, but everything is packed in here or safe in there. Uh, and I think that yeah, it's pretty much it. We're excited, to me, and you, baby boy. Yes, it's a very exciting thing. <laughs> Oh, uh, we just got back from Aunt Vine, Aunt Vine, I, it hasn't got the there in it, I keep forgetting, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, it was a much more exciting event, I'd say, for me, say so for us. Yeah, <laughs> a lot more people. Yeah, it was, um, there was a, uh, uh, Cincinnati Bengals? Are they called Cincinnati Bengals or Ohio Bengals? <laughs> anyway. There's a football, there's a football team called the Bengals. Their stadium is here in Cincinnati. Uh, and there was a Bengals game on. Uh, so the Brewery de Brew was a really cool place. Um, yeah, I, I really liked how it looked in there. But uh, they were like hosting this Bengal game. So it was a lot of uh, football fans there, uh, which you'll see just drew a crowd in as well as like, other people on the street. Um, yeah, it went really well. Um, I'll talk about it more in detail later on. I'm just, yeah, just getting it just off my brain quickly. So um, I'll catch you when I'm a bit more fresh. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so I'm finally making this video after telling you guys for like months now about how me and a bunch of other small businesses got scammed by an event organizer. But first, I really want to talk about Art on Vine, which is a monthly local business event of all kinds of small businesses here in Cincinnati. <laughs> got that out. <laughs> Overall, uh, I really enjoyed my time there. Um, even if the first market I ever did of them was an absolute dead market. <laughs> but um, their event at the Rheingeist Brewery was great fun. And I think I would table with them again, especially during a holiday event. But any other time, like off season, probably not. As well, I personally think my art doesn't sell to the main audience they attract. It's a classic. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> and it's absolutely me. <laughs> but um, this being said, if you are close to Cincinnati or ever in the area, do check out if they have an event coming on in that weekend. Um, because I think I said, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> um, if I didn't, they have an event once a month, I believe. So yeah, as I said, if you're in the area, do go check it out to see if they have one on that weekend and support all the local businesses here. Okay, now for the tea. Um, so the market event that ended up being a scam. So the quote unquote organizers go under the name the shoppers market. So there's a warning for you. If you ever see them, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> I believe in name and shame. Anyway, <laughs> looking at their website and looking at the pictures, vendors, and the fact that it was going to be a Christmas market, I really had my hopes up for this one as it was also really cheap at about $60 for the whole table, which maybe should have been a sign for something was up, but I was still exploring the local craft market scene at the time and didn't really have an idea on what was expensive and what was not. So anyway, it was the weekend after Art and Vine, so I just kept my goods packed as thankfully my website tracks all my stock and it was all looking good. So like Art and Vine, this was at a local brewery called Humble Monk and I'm not much of a drinker, especially of beer. I just find it like too bubbly and a bit like sour. I've got a sweet tooth, <laughs> but um, sour is probably not the right word, but you know what I mean. <laughs> savory savory anyway <laughs> i'm not much of a drinker and i don't really like beers that much but 
me and Forrest did get a drink and it was actually really, really good. Actually, we got a couple of drinks. It was, yeah, they were delicious. So um, again, if you are in the area, do check them out because sadly, they also got the, well, shit end of the stick in this story. Unlike past events, we made a note to arrive early to grab a good spot and honestly, it was a good thing we did because, well, I don't know the exact numbers, but I do know that the organizers oversold the vendor space. Now, the space that we were given was for around 15 vendors and 36 vendors showed up with the promise of the event being an outdoor event, even though we were actually inside on the main brewing floor brewing 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 floor <laughs> see this is what happens when i try to do my nice voice <laughs> no i just can't speak <laughs> um but yeah like what makes this worse is like humble monk had no idea that this was meant to be an outdoor event so they were completely blindsided by that as well and so it had to make space for us so because we turned up early we were able to grab a space but many of the other vendors didn't have this chance and well they had to go home and another reason we turned up early was because we were instructed to do so i received an email about a week or so before the event telling me that there would be an organizer at the event who would then give us a dedicated space and you know expected us to be completed about half an hour before the show which is completely standard but guess he wasn't there who could it be yeah it was the organizer <laughs> um so we the vendors and the help of the brewery staff had to take control of the event where were the organizers you ask down in texas of course so it was somewhere similar to that uh they were visiting family apparently but either way they couldn't come but had said their friend was meant to be there well that friend never showed up so that was either a lie or hey maybe they were generally effed over by that person too so yeah no organizers in sight cramped space which couldn't hold us all and what else oh yeah the very lack of advertising for the event now the organizers did do one single advert and that was on eventbrite but guess what that even had the wrong date so that's technically not an advert at all <laughs> um and they didn't actually advertise the actual event until the early afternoon of the day when the show had already freaking started like come on now i know and agree that vendors should advertise the events they're going to be at but honestly that's more for the vendor and their fans and not for the event organizers so yeah many of the vendors there had to go to town on advertising as well as chasing down shoppers market and finding out what the hell was going on we got next to nothing from them, but an email stating that registration refunds are not issued for any reason, which is why I personally will say this was a scam, as too many things went wrong for it to be an accident. And also, all of us learning there were seven, and like seven, come on, different emails and individuals linked to this one event, with none willing to respond properly. And to me, that's pretty flipping sus. I mean, the thing is, like, my gut felt a bit weird the day before anyway because of the lack of advertising. But yeah, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> but no, I wasn't. Oh, no, she wasn't. Oh, no, I wasn't. Oh, no, she wasn't. No, I wasn't prepared for this. I'm pretty sure I'm missing on some of the details, but I definitely covered everything think important but as said if you ever see an advert for the shoppers market don't fall for it even though i paid for it on paypal i and no one else as far as i'm aware has got their money back i thankfully got about 51 dollars back of that 60 bucks that they took from me and that was in sales and at least in the time that was there it wasn't completely wasted as you can see here i ended up doing some commission work but still it was 110 percent out of pocket um and what's even worse is i got this nasty flu that kicked my freaking ass that very night and i was in bed for a good three four days and jen just feeling just grubby and nasty for a couple weeks after i don't think it was covid but maybe 
Since then, I haven't taken part in any other craft market, but instead, earlier this year, I got my first Artist Alley table at a new small local comic and anime event, Northern Kentucky Con. And even though it was very, very small, only one day, and as I said, a very new event, I was able to make $300, of which about 130 of that was profit. Now, I know that's not a lot, but it did confirm something to me. Comic, anime, pop culture events are more my crowd. And I've kind of had these suspicions from the very beginning because, well, I want them to be my target audience. And with this, I want to announce the events you can see me at this year. I currently have four events planned and in order we have Super Cincy Expo, which is April the 5th to the 7th, Anime Ohio, which is in June 21st to the 23rd, Anime to Columbus, which is in July on the 19th from 21st, <laughs> and finally Matsururi Con, which is also in Columbus and will be on August the 30th at September 1st. I'm both really excited and absolutely petrified <laughs> of these events. Um, I've been working so hard recently to get new items designed and ordered in time, and I really can't wait to share them with you in these coming weeks. But that is it from me today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and please leave a like and think about subscribing. Uh, I'm really back in the groove of video making after such a busy winter and I'm so, so happy to be back sharing my time and thoughts for you all. If you want to support me further, you can visit both my Ko-fi and my shop, which I've linked below. I really, really want to connect with my followers and subscribers more. And I feel like giving awards via Ko-fi is a great place to start. So if you do check that out, you'll see both my tiers and what I offer for being a subscriber to it. If you got this far, please leave a tea or hot beverage comment because you know why. <laughs> and I hope to see you all very, very soon. Bye.